favorites. our favorites. And today we are talking about a director, an actor, a genre, any collection of movies, and our favorites in that category. Today's category is a great one. Oh, he's one of the m- most iconic animators you will ever heard of, Don Bluth. I his he's got some weird stuff, man. Like he jump springboarded off of Disney, right? Correct? Yes. Yes. Would you like me to to dive yeah, deep? Into I know the, you know the you, you're great. You know the history problem. So, so, so it's, and that is actually not too deep of it. So Don okay. Bluth was a very talented animator at Disney back in the seventies and eighties. In the early eighties, during the production of The Fox and the Hound, he and a bunch of animators over creative differences left Disney in this big animator exodus, and he tried to set up his own independent company. Now, I say try to set up because I think there's all kinds of twists and turns in the story. I don't know all of them. In becoming like more independent mm-hmm. later in his career, he worked for Fox for a bit, and that was at the turn of the century. Titan AE is his last full feature like movie that he's made. That was 2000. Hmm. So from 82 to 2000, that's the stretch of his movies, which the first movie is what we'll talk about in yeah. a second. Gary Goldman is his co-director on many of these. And the uh, and I believe uh, you had even said before tonight, you know, off camera or whatnot, but being mm-hmm. off Disney or. Yeah, and I, I wouldn't really I wouldn't put it that way. It's just different. And I think that's why he was leaving Disney is because he didn't. The, the Disney way is everyone's talking. It's just not Which Don I'm, Bluth. I'm, I'm happy because because we, we need less of everything being like Disney. We need more weird. Just more variety. Yeah. And his stuff, stuff. I say his stuff is darker because some of it is and then some of it is not. That's why I feel like. It's dark, very diverse, but still feels like. That's where, I, that's where I go to weird. The three like, yeah. ones we've picked are all Fairly, pretty dark. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to are. think of the one that's not dark. Maybe Pebble and the Penguin. <laughs> never even heard of that. Okay. You've never heard of that. No. Is maybe <laughs> an American. Uh, it's got dark stuff in yeah, it. Yeah. I'd say American like dough. it's weird. Like even Thumbelina might have parts, but overall it's not. I would say a troll in Central Park. I've not seen, but I don't think there's anything like that. Rockadoodle even I don't think has that much. <laughs> <laughs> Rockadoodle is probably not that dark. All Dogs Go to Heaven has some pretty... Oh, oh my God, that one hits you like I'm surprised a, I didn't, I didn't think about trip. that one for this. I forgot. Like, I might, I might I have picked have, that. I should have picked that for my favorite. But actually, that it's, it's a good... Uh, it's a good segue. Good, yeah, it's a good yeah. segue because the one that I picked for my favorite... On a rewatch, I didn't like it all that much. <laughs> but it's still your favorite. But it you gotta was commit my to the fa- bit. It, yes. No, it was my favorite. We're, what no, is no, it? About the Secret of Nip. Ah. For those of you that the National Institute of Mental Health, yes, yep. it. I'll be real honest. I remember, and I know we're probably going to touch on this once we get going because we're going to mention this off camera. Um, I so the reason that I chose this is because like I remember like in the car ride or whatever, like as an early kid watching those weird dark movies, and this one stuck out to me. Like, oh, I remember liking this. This was weird, dark, and cool. I was and. Uh, the other one that comes to mind is the Black Cauldron. I feel like this is a little bit similar to that, where it's like got your, your weird stuff. But except this one is like this, better. Yeah, is it? This is better than because the Black Cauldron. This is better. <laughs> yeah. What like, what what we were saying is this is the type of dark that yes. people think that the Black Cauldron is. Yes, this is just it's weird, and I'll be really <laughs> like I said. I I I watched. When did I watch? I watched this on Monday. And I'm watching. I'm watching. Like, okay, all right. This makes no sense. I <laughs> oh, well, no, and I'm not trying to. I'm not a big defender of it. I'm just wondering what didn't make sense. Like, I I feel there are like, some jumps in the story. There, that's what I was gonna yeah. say. Like, yeah, I'm just I, curious because I want to know if I might have missed it because I feel like I've seen it enough to where it's like, oh yeah, you just go with it. The, well, that's the what thing, confused like, you, you is what I'm curious about. So like, I feel I feel like they introduced. Or they tried introducing a lot of lore with whatever Nim was, with all the rats that were coming off, which it ended up just they just were being tested on. Yeah. Um. I. That doesn't sound like a confusion thing. No, but like, so I was gonna get around to like, I feel like it's con- like the tone is confusing. If that the makes tone sense. is confusing. Yes. Like, what way? I think he curious. means inconsistent. I feel like they're trying so to... So you're not confused. I'm confused about what the tone is. Like, Why? Right? 
I'm because just curious. Because it's inconsistent. Okay. The inc- because it's inconsistent. inconsistent. So the tone's like, is like, you're not confused. The tone's just inconsistent. Con- no, I'm, it's just... It's, 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 it's semantics, semantics. For the, that's, the, that's pottery. I'm not no, gonna, no, I'm no, not no. Gonna, no I'm, not gonna that that. I'm not going to start that. I'm not going to start that. I know what you're doing. I think what you're I trying is like, when you're confused about what tone it was, it usually means it's an inconsistent tone. You're yeah. not necessarily confused as much as just like, yeah, this tone is all over the place. Well, because like, it, like at, at one point, like it's just like... The, Jonathan Brisby's wife come to me it, so we and then it's all and then it just jumps back it and it's feels like, like and this rooster are just messing around rooster he's a crow he's a crow thank you um <laughs> it feels rooster. like there are giant parts of the story that we as the watchers were supposed to understand that are not there like ever, which yeah because like everything they try to talk about like like I'm like remind like I'm not kidding you when I tell you this. I watched this two days ago. Who was Jonathan Brisby again? Like I, her husband. Wait, no, 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 I know that. Like, why was he like? Is why he is he important? Just because he, he saved like, them. Yeah. Like I just. I that's mean, that's the better how, question is why was he in Nim because he's a mouse and they only ever talk about rats being a part. But of But there were other yes. mice. They got blown out. Yeah. Down the thing, which they talk about. In the sequel. There's a sequel? Yeah. Yes, I watched it. (laughs) This is the biggest thing about yourself. So, do you remember... (laughs) I watched the sequel of that. Do you remember when um, we watched Flubber and he and I watched The Absent-Minded Professor? Because you wanted to prove me wrong. No, just for context. Yeah. He decided wrongfully (laughs) to... And pay for it. He paid for it. I rented it. He could have watched it with ads for free. I didn't want it to be any. I watched it with ads too. Any longer than it had to be. That was a mistake. The sequel is one of the worst animated things I've ever seen. (laughs) Oh my gosh! And it has nothing to do with Don Bluth. Okay, that's right. I was going to ask. None of none of the sequels of his movies, except for Bartok the Great, the Magnificent. The sorry, the Magnificent. Have yeah. anything to do with him? He doesn't. He doesn't usually do sequels. He just no, there's, does there's his... a great clip from a YouTuber I followed for years where he went to a Don Bluth lecture and he has the video clip of him where he's like, "So what do you think about <laughs> what do you think about all those sequels and musical sequels of your movies?" And before he even finishes the question, Don goes, "Hate him," <laughs> and everyone laughs. laughs. It's a great clip. Like he's trying to word this question, just hate him. Wait, are you telling me that they made the Secret of Nim sequel like a musical? It is a musical. It's terrible. Timmy is the main character. Yeah. You have to say the full title. Sorry, The Secret of Nim 2. Timmy to the rescue. (laughs) I... (laughs) So the Don't whole you just break your brain. The whole point is what? Timmy, who has like one line in this movie yeah. and is like a plot device more than a character, is, That's all is the is. main character of the next movie. And it's all about like he has to be this great leader of the new rats place thing, and he has to go save people. It ends up being all those mm-hmm. mice that got blown down the the vent or whatever to mm-hmm. their deaths. Yeah, they survived. Of course. Wow. Yeah. And Nim took them right back. So he has to go there and save them. <laughs> Just like his dad. And his brother is the bad guy. And for some reason, when he's evil, he's voiced by Eric Idle. <laughs> Full British accent. They turn him back. They fix his mind. And he has his old voice again. It's so bad. My God. But anyway, getting back to the secret of Nim. Yeah. I think one of the, inc- like, I don't want to call it inconsistent because it's really just underdeveloped, which is a thing. Are you could- talking about the amulet thing? Yeah. yeah, it's never really explained. I yeah. was the that, amulet that's... thing or the cat. Like they build that cat up a lot, and then just it's not dragon. Dragon, dragon. it's just not there. It's not even. I mean, it was there. It's like, not like, even what, there. What, in, like, it, it's not even there in the tent scene where she's like, "I'm gonna gotta escape this cage." It's not even there. It's asleep already. Yeah. I mean, I, I wonder if they were trying to do one of those things where, like, oh, we we tell how horrible it is, and then he's off screen, so it scares them I mean, more. I mean, like, I, I think it's probably. I mean, was this the first one, Jed? Don uh, Bluth. Yeah. Yeah. This was his actual. Yeah. First so movie, I think it, first feature like I think it's probably so much sense. indicative of that and animation at the time. Um, <laughs> I had a weird. I had a weird time with this movie because. So it starts and she's going to what's his name? 
Say it again. The old mouse. Mr. Ages. Mr. Ages. Yeah. Um, she's going to Mr. Ages. And then, oh, yeah, Timmy's got pneumonia. And I go, have I seen this before? And the whole time I'm thinking, this <laughs> doesn't look familiar, but I know I know that plot. Uh-huh. <laughs> Guess what movie I was confusing it with? Oh, God. A movie, I think from Fox, called Once Upon a Forest. Who did me? Not a clue. That's and I and I thought, man, is that the same thing? The only thing similar about it is that a, a relation to the main character <laughs> falls into a coma because of uh, pollution. <laughs> it is Fox. It's distributed by Fox. It's Hanna Barbera produced it. Ah, uh, I loved that movie as a child. Never seen that. This I just felt like <laughs> everything was kind of like the animation was cool, but. It, I it, felt like everything was underdeveloped. It was it, like, and that's what I like. Like, I, I did not know this was his first feature length movie. And it makes a lot of sense now because like, I feel like there's really strong ideas. There's really strong lore. There's really cool world to build upon. But the movie itself just. Yeah. Like, like I said, it feels like there are bits of the story that we're supposed to know. Yes. that We're not shown. Like I could see like, Let's say, let's say, like, I feel like take Don Bluth out of the 80s, plop him now today, and, like, he still makes this as, like, his first movie. Or I I feel like he could make, like, this would be, like, one of those things that's better. I, I said this before on the show, I'll say it again, as a series where you get, like. Wait, a, wait, is it live action? It's not live action. I, I, I just But mean, it's already in English. <laughs> what do we do? Giving it we got to translate it to Japanese I'm, I'm, nah, and then translate nah, it back. Nah, nah, nah. I'm just saying, I, I love this world. And I think if they focus more. Uh, that, I mean, the thing is, I, I, I don't know. How, I, I'm not that talented of a writer. I don't know how to fix the movie. I just think that. Yeah. I don't think there is any fixing of the movie. I, I honestly don't think that those were things that were accidentally left out. I think it's just they it was. Because it's not well, based on any... It's based off a book. Is it? It is based mm-hmm. off a book. Mrs. Okay. Frisbee and the Rats of Nim is the name of the book. It came oh. out in 1972. won the Newberry Medal. So there's more stuff to it that we... That just you can't fit into a movie. Yeah. No, that's I, super interesting. I'm still... I don't... I never read why they changed her name to Brisby. Probably, uh... Because of the toy. It has something to do with... But it's not spelled the same. Oh. Because frisbee is it probably it probably has something to do with being able to pronounce it or say it clearly. Something V is easier to learn enough. Maybe he just said, "Screw it, I'm doing what I want." (laughs) Does he just wants to change it enough so does he get any copyright? (laughs) Maybe that's what. Also, the idea that Timmy can't move from his bed, but they're gonna move his cinder block. He can't go outside because of the cold air. They think the oh, cold okay. air could cause his I, I thought, to worsen. I thought that they said he couldn't move at all. Yeah, they didn't want him moving. And moving on top of that, but also like just they don't want him going outside. Yeah, so I, I do love that moment at the end where he's better and he's like, Mom, can I come? I was like, no. 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 <laughs> he just. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Like I said, it's. I. It's a good movie, but I just it didn't. I yeah. I, I didn't remember. I remembered it more fondly than it I mean. Was it it seems like that type of movie that would be a nostalgic movie that's missing gaps because mm-hmm. what you remember is the parts that are in the movie, and you, when you try to explain it to someone, when you try to explain it to someone, you're trying to explain it from a point of nostalgia, and the in the stop gaps in the movie make sense. You know what else you, you saying that? I feel like this movie is like. Of memory that you remember, like the highlights from. Well, that's like, yeah. isn't that what you just said? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I guess it is. Uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's the exact it's, same no, thing. That's what they said. That's basically no. what it is. Like you only remember the stuff. The nostalgia, no, just and, and I think, and I think so. It's, it's the highlights. So, so what he just okay, said. Fine, fine. You don't remember all, but you remember bits and pieces that are that I remembered fond. Like, like the majority like of my highlights. memories nowadays. <laughs> But also things. reflective of the movie in that it's kind of kind of like a highlight sort of thing. Like I said, there are bits and pieces of it missing mm-hmm. or it feel like they're missing. Yeah, it's pretty violent, too. That oh first gosh. time when they show Brutus with the with the electrical cord thing and he's hitting it on yeah. everything and it's electric. Oh, crazy. man. 
That's you were right. This was G, rated. Sorry, this is very different thing going on. This is rated G, right? I think so. How? Because PG didn't exist yet. Oh. Also, it's not that scary. I mean, there are or some PG things. thirteen I, didn't exist. There, well, I know PG I, did. Okay, not PG listen, thirteen. I'm not saying this is PG thirteen. I'm not. But yeah. like, I feel like this is at least PG. Just because, like, it's you'd just, think. But also, remember, a lot of people have the stupid mindset of this is for kids. Animation is a kids thing. Oh, so they yeah. look down right, on it. It's animated, so it has to be nuts. for children. I mean, it is based off a children's book, isn't it? I know, but they have this idea that all animation is. Not that this isn't, but this is probably not for younger viewers. That's what I, I feel like it's just... That was, it, this would confuse me if I was too, too young. That was the other thing. The rats, I feel, especially the bad rat, mm-hmm. was just, under, just underdeveloped. Jenner. Yeah. Like, I didn't well, understand. It seemed like he was just evil to be evil, which I I get it. It's a thing. Yeah, but they act like there's more to it. And I'm like, I'd kind of like to know more. I truly but, just power hungry. That's it. Yeah. Do you think we could get like a, like a, almost like a prequel nowadays? Like, I, I, feel like I don't know. They made it too. I guess that would have to have been successful like for us to get a pre- like, prequel. You like Ralph Macchio singing? <laughs> he does. Pretty bad. <laughs> You know, I love Ralph Macchio, but I don't know if I could appreciate his singing voice. But anyway. Is it actually Ralph Macchio or is it? <laughs> That's the voice of Timmy. I love it. Yeah, but in, is in it him scene. singing? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I looked it up. It's like, oh, buddy. <laughs> well, he's too old for the Karate Kid movies at that point because, of course, the series was well he's, far away. Yeah. Guess I got a voice. Timmy. <laughs> In Secret of Noob 2, Timmy to the Rescue. God. What a I terrible don't watch movie. That. I don't watch that. But. You, okay. do not, you do not need to watch Secret of Nim 2, Timmy I, to the Rescue. I know, but the thing is, I know I'm getting into something that's not good. Whereas this, I was disappointed because I'm like, I, this is my favorite. I remember this. Story. Yeah, but like with the new guy, I told you that was bad going into it. I know. That's true. Yeah, just to wrap up Secret of Nim, it's like, I didn't like it when I was a kid. It was it confused me because I was not used to that kind of darker, more violent animated movie. Because mm. I grew up just like you and you on Disney, and then for mm. us, a lot more Pixar than you. But, but like I was not used to that. And then, of course, later you, as a kid, it's like you start to be like, oh, okay, people really like this because it's different than those Disney movies. But then just watching it this time, I was like, I recognize that this is good. I just don't like it that much still. It's fine. Yeah, but even like critically, I think it's the lesser of the three big ones, three or four big ones. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The three that everyone talks about anyways. Yeah. We're speaking of the other big ones. Let's go to Jared's pick because he's got a another pretty big one. Jared, what is your favorite Don Bluth film? My favorite Don Bluth movie, which is funny because now it's a Disney property. Yeah. Disney, yeah. Disney won in the end. I want like a clip. Of, I want a clip of someone asking him what he thinks of that now. <laughs> <laughs> so it's Anastasia. Woo! Came out in 1997. Right. Uh, it's when uh, Don Bluth and Gary Goldman were basically brought into Fox to compete with Disney. Fox is Makes like, sense. we're gonna have tighter control over the story and writing, but you're gonna get the budgets that you want. Mm-hmm. And I was actually, I'm going to bring this up. I was reading about it today. I read, uh, I'm going to hold it up for the camera. It's Don Bluth's autobiography, Somewhere Out There, My Animated Life. Huh. I've not read the whole thing. I've been meaning to start. I'm a bit behind on reading. And yeah, yeah. But Wait, so How I, long have you had Dune now? A year and a month. Me too, buddy. I've, I've... So, yeah. So I, I went to the anesthesia chapter. It's all I had time to read. And just reading about it, It's like, wow, yeah. It's like they're brought into Fox to compete with Disney as Lion King is in production. Oh, okay. And Lion, they know Lion King is going to be big. And then Toy Story comes out and starts to change the landscape as they're in production of this. So this comes out, and actually, it's his highest grossing movie. Wait, what year did this come out? 97. Is it really? I just said that. Mm-hmm. Wow. It's his highest grossing Not by much. I think Land Before Time is second. That's in- I, was like, I would assume. That's intense. That I, I never yeah, would have. Two, two Oscar nominations for Anastasia. Wow. For music and then song. What song? Makes sense. I Probably thought it was Once Upon a December, December. That would, which that it makes sense. sense. That, that, I, that is, 
Well, they, but they, they use like the Once Upon December like throughout the whole movie. Uh, yeah. The December. <laughs> Jack it's a nope, it's Journey to the Past. Really? Yep. Interesting. But they're both great songs. Mm-hmm. Just. That's really so. Yeah, I yeah, really so, would have thought it would have been the Once Upon December. Yeah. And and of course, reading into into this, it's if any of you don't know, Anastasia is the name of uh, Tsar Nicholas II's youngest daughter. Who, after the Tsar's family was murdered, there was all these rumors and myths that she survived. So this and is, a bunch of imposters over the years came forward claiming to be her the most famous. I forgot her name. Some Anna Anderson, I think, is the name. So this is right loosely based off a real story. Um. Well, no, very, because, very loosely. Because I know the- because DNA tests in the last decade prove that Anastasia died that in night. certain ah. con- in certain contexts. Anastasia is referred to as a legend. So very loose. I didn't even know that. Like, very, I knew very that. loosely in the fact that this, the thing that sets off the movie happened. Everything up to her getting the on the train yeah. is, mo- well, I mean, you have certain things like how they get out of the palace. Uh, we don't, we don't. Oh, no. Uh, I, I, if we yeah. do know, it's not that. But We like, don't even really know if she got out of the palace. Oh. Mm-hmm. And she did. I thought you said she. No, in like real life. Yeah, they got out of the palace. The the Tsar's family was taken somewhere else, and they were murdered there. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, they weren't at the palace. It was separate from that. It was during one of the revolutions. I, I watched a documentary on it years ago, yeah, or, or, and then also watched the 70s movie Nicholas and Alexandra, which those are her parents, and they cover all that. I just can't remember the details, but they weren't at the palace. They were taken somewhere. They're under guard, and then the guards killed them. Was it by actually? They like woke Ras- him up in the middle of the night. Was actually Rasputin's orders to do that? No, no, no. He was he was leeching off them. I to be fair, I don't know as much history as I should. Basically, so the youngest kid, which we see in the also, movie, to be fair, this is really random Russian history. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> the her her she has a younger sibling, a brother, and he was a he had hemophilia. Okay. And so Rasputin was brought in as like a healer. And then I think he was turned away at some point because he was a fraud or something. Mm-hmm. Rasputin is a whole box. A- b- b- ah, ah, Rasputin. Da, 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 da. Yeah. yeah. So when, uh, and I was reading that they, when he brought forward, hey, let's have Rasputin be the villain. Cause let's just say, oh, he wanted this to happen. And because she escaped, he blames her for his downfall and why he's dead, which is what happened. So all, cause remember he, in the movie, he drowns. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was just because she was still his, his the, the, well, that's part of it. the Romanoff line. I didn't think yeah, it was it's solely. That, and she was kind of the reason he died. So it's well, like all these. Mm-hmm. And so, so that's like, wow, that's a really good fit. Huh. Rasputin also, I, I yeah. looked into those, is a reason for the movie disclaimer of um, all these characters are, are fictional. Any coincidences are, are sorry, similarities are coincidences. There we go. Mm-hmm. Go And Rasputin wasn't alive at that point. It was other people who were portrayed in the movie, but Rasputin was, it was called something like, in the Empress. I forgot. All, I just looked it up and I forgot it. But Rasputin is like a big part of that. Huh. So just a whole, funny how this that's, is all, because yeah, this feels different. so much older and you realize. No, I did not I mean, know this was. Movies existed by that point. They were silent movies in the teens, but teens when this is happening and then that whole thing was like 10 15 20 years later but it's just funny how it's not as far back as we think while yeah. it still feels pretty far back i i could have sworn like watching this this was like made in like the 80s like i i did not know that this was wait what this movie yeah you he's it talking about when it takes place not when it was made oh okay yeah. i yeah sorry I, th- I thought it was because they obviously like the whole 3d <laughs> animated stuff was played Okay, okay. That's okay. definitely a late 90s, early 2000s shit. Yeah. yeah, especially like the whole, like, it's kind of cool to see in a theater. Because I, oh, I, yeah. I, I like the way they made the um, castles and the, like the buildings. You know what? I feel like this makes sense in my head. I don't know if this makes sense to you guys. Some of the shots that were like, it took place in the, um, in the castle, like the sweeping castle. It gave me the very a very similar vibe to Titanic, and I wonder if it's just that. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. No about, way, were you about, really about the ship though? There are a couple of shots of the ship that mm-hmm. looked like really rough CG, and the blending is bad. I go, wow, this looks just like a couple of shots from Titanic, yeah. and neither one of them look very good. 
the shots. Not the movie. The movie Titanic was fine, but oh, there are some definitely. shots you're like, they're too I'm heavily so, reliant on that CG. It's so funny you thought the same. But, the, but thing. this it's is the same year. That, but this is yeah. in that same sort of era as like you know your Treasure Planets and. That, that's yeah. the other one that gave me the vibe. And that, that, and that, for the time, really did it well. And even then, it's still some of it is kind of like, Ugh. yeah. Whereas Treasure Planet, most of that blending is is good oh yeah having just watched it again recently there's a couple parts you go oof el dorado we talked about the yeah. barrels like most of that movie is fine where mm-hmm. it's like i can see it it's not blended great but those barrels are the worst <laughs> like again it's and then titan ae is another one where i remember i haven't seen that in so long i don't even it's know. it's i don't think it's blended too well together and it did not do very well commercially <laughs> and that's and unfortunately it's don's last movie that he's done yeah, but the movie Anastasia I watched on Disney Plus two years ago in in December, of course, because mm-hmm. it's like, hey, this is on here. I've never seen the whole thing. I just have like little fever dreams about parts of it, mainly the Rasputin stuff. Yeah, that's fair. which is not that that there's not much of that. He kind of doesn't do much until the the end. Mm-hmm. It's kind of He's an never even on the same plane as she is until yep. the end. Yep, but he has a really killer song. He does have a good song. That song's great. You also want to know, like, I I don't know why, but uh, the um, who voices Dimitri? Uh, John Cusack. John Cusack. The longest time. And I, think it's, I knew this was made uh, long ago that it wasn't Chris Pine. That's what I was thinking, <laughs> too. Yes. I, <laughs> thank you. But I was like, I know like, that's not Chris Pine, but this is, damn, it looks why like Why does this sound just like Chris Pine? Oh my god! It didn't sound like him, but it looked like him. I thought it sounded like him too. Like I was just like, "Is this Chris?" But Pine? okay, so that leads me to my point. <laughs> I love this movie. It's beautiful. I have a couple of things that I'm going to say about it. You know what the biggest hang up for me was this time? What's her name? Meg Ryan. Mm-hmm. And John Cusack. Everybody else is throwing their all into this. You got Christopher Lloyd out there oh being God. magnificent. You got Kelsey Grammer out there. Vladimir being, putting being magnificent. You got Bernadette it? Peters with the French yeah, accent. And, um, Even Angela Lansbury. Yeah. For Angela not Lansbury, having a, for not yeah. doing the accent and they're super all, thick. They're little And they're all like doing like a very respectable job of accents and voices and whatnot. And here you got Meg Ryan. I don't even I can't even think of a line where it's like Oh, she's got like the most American, like, like Midwest it. accent about it. Yeah. And it's like, oh, the two did not have an accent at all. I, just, I, I didn't realize that until you just pointed that out. So totally in, right. in my personal opinion about that, it's got to be all or nothing. It's got to be no one has an accent or everyone needs to have an accent. So yeah, like Fincher's if they're girl from the same tattoo. era, what Fincher's girl with the dragon tattoo. Everyone has an accent except for Daniel Craig because they tried it, and then Fincher's like, "No, <laughs> I, yeah, no. But I mean, I don't like I that movie Fincher. either, but I like it. Some parts of it, but that's yeah. That, but it's kind of that scene. But uh, so that's so. I never. How, I don't know how I didn't realize that watching it that. Because you want two. every movie to have American no, accent I in do English. No, I do not. You probably up. thinking like, man, okay, if this is live action, and everyone has so, the same American so, accent. God. It might be just because you haven't seen it enough. It also might be because we're we are American and our American brains don't really it hear think. it. Yeah. What did that, you say? That, I, I said hear it, but <laughs> <I> said, <think. laughs> well, you are right. Though. I mean, this was the very first time, and still the only time that I've seen this movie. And so, I'm mean, for the first time, it was like it was. Oh, it's your first movie. time seeing yeah. it. I've never. Yeah, seen Yeah, so that's why. It makes sense. If you go back and watch it, it'll be like, oh, it's, that's, gonna that's not as great that. as what I remember it being. Yeah. Um. Another thing, <laughs> you were saying how you appreciated like the backgrounds, how they did the palace and everything. Oh, yes. So, I this is not a knock on the animation. <laughs> I get that it's done. It's intended to be done like an oil painting. So they're supposed to be like moving around in an oil painting. I get that. It's so static. And there is almost no life to most of the backgrounds that the characters move through. They are very clearly different types of animation. And it hasn't bothered me watching it in the past. This time I was like, okay, it really like some of the ways that like, John Cusack runs through the frame. Mm-hmm. 
Mm. Or it just it it just bugged and it's not every scene. Mm -hmm. You see. But there are a lot of them where I'm like, I just can't. That's interesting. Because the, the ones when I say that I like the background and that kind of stuff. It was it's the dancing scenes. It's the like the Yeah, those ones those ones work. I'm talking about okay. like when they're on like uh, when they're on like the bridge for the final fight and like nothing in the bridge is moving. They're not interacting. Nothing's it's nothing's casting a shadow or anything like that. There's there's no depth to it at all. That's fair. I can see that for the last like bridge scene. Like, I feel like there was. But because it is in there so much, that is what makes me think that it was a choice to do that. Probably was. Yeah. Did any part of it get you a little teary eyed? I think if I because no, you cried no. everything because oh. it got I me mean, a little teary eyed the first time this time not as much mainly because Angela Lansbury rest in peace oh. hearing her it's like man no th th that is sad but no I, honestly I did not like I felt like it, it, it made me feel some things but like on a scale of one to bawling my eyes out I was probably only like a two or a three it's it's the 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 the, the reuniting scene when. She's That's a like, good scene. It's so it's, good. It and I remember very... thinking, oh, man, I'm, am I going to cry? Because mainly because Angela Lansbury, but also like I almost cried the first time. I didn't. But I was like, what well, a great. I, and I just like like asking the questions and like like when she said it, it smelled like um, peppermint. peppermint. Yeah. And like, like just the, the, like that realization. And it, like, yeah. It, the same thing with Dimitri when she says the thing about there's a boy in the trap door and he kind of turns like, what? Mm hmm. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's so. All right, what are you, what are you going to talk about with the music box? I have two things to say about the music mm. box, and it, one is kind of a larger story. So I'll start with the minimum. Why did no one think to put that necklace together with that music box? Looking at the two of them, they look the same. <laughs> yeah, I get story. Yeah, I get plot device. It's just kind of like what. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I'm pretty sure she showed him the necklace and said, this is from someone very important to me, but I don't know who. How did he not look at that and go, oh, uh, <laughs> yep. <laughs> Secondarily, <laughs> so I ordered a Blu-ray copy of this off of eBay. <laughs> it came, uh, you know, it came, I think, Monday. And I opened it up and I looked at it. One of the clips is broken off the Blu-ray and the inside looks like someone just ran it through. Like the label looks like it was an inkjet label. Aww. And I'm like, did I get a pirated copy? But I'm looking at this case going, going, it doesn't look, it's got all the right markings. I put the Blu-ray in my player. It plays, it has all the like the FBI warnings and everything mm -hmm. like that. That seems right. <laughs> And then the first thing you see is that stupid jewelry box with the with the people that pop up, but they're not animated normally. They look almost real. And I'm like, is this even the right movie? <laughs> Crap. <laughs> and then it was. Nice. <laughs> that is funny. No, I bought my copy with that came with Fern Gully and Thumbelina. <laughs> see, but Fern Gully is God, fun. That's such a so is Thumbo yeah. <laughs> Fern Gully is fun. You got two out of three on that one. You're good. Sure. Yeah. I, uh, I was going to say what I love about the, the way they do the story is there is a bit of a lie reveal, but they twist it in an interesting way because it's like he's putting on a con to get money. But it's funny because she actually... is, but not neither of them know it. So then it gets to this point of like he is pulling a con, but can it really be if she actually is? But then when she, figure, you know what I mean? It's. But, so back and forth. But thing that's, a, I find but that's fun. a question, though, because the, if I remember correctly, it was just last night. I should. When the liar reveal is revealed. Yeah. And she goes, you're just doing this to get money. She knows. Right. She knows what? She knows that they're doing a con. I think. No, no. They didn't. Did they not tell her? Wait, no, they, no because on. they because it's easier to split um it's easier to split a reward two ways than three ways. Remember when they find her, it's like she she doesn't know about money. I think she knows they're doing this thing. But hey, if you do this with us, you can then probably find your family in Paris. They just think, oh, we can get this money with her. Where she's thinking, oh, I'm doing this thing. 
And once it gets to the actual question, he's like, I don't think I can do this because she's just act- she just wants to get to Paris. Mm-hmm. She doesn't know about the money. I still think she was unfoundedly mad at him. Oh, oh yeah. But yeah. they but Lyra but reveals it, always result and it's in that. The next scene, because yeah. he doesn't just mope about it, he tries to fix it. He steals her car. <laughs> Brings her, he's like, well, if you just will listen to me, and then that he and then I like him turning down the money. And she's like, No, why why would you do that? That, and he's that like, slow scene is that wonderful. Was, oh, when she's was. like, You you really were him. You saved our lives. Why didn't you do? he's like, call it a change of heart? And he doesn't tell her when they cross on the stairs and everything. This is really good. Yeah, I was, that, really was a, good. that was a good, good part of that. And I like and the bridge climax is good too. I like how she's the one that defeats him by just smashing his little bottle. Right. <laughs> I know. That's this is for Dimitri. It seemed like and it was a, a little easy, but I, again, I, I they set that up how. early in the movie, though. They do it. I, I know they set it, it up. It's I, hard. I it's it hard makes... for me to fault them Ooh. when they set it up. Ooh, yeah. That, that horse statue that comes to life and just, <laughs> oh that horse was haunting it was haunting but also like in the blending it's like well, that's, that's, that's what I was referring to it's just again style it was. saves money it was a new technology I know it's it's a product of the time it is but I, I'm so glad I forgot about the horse when you mentioned it I was watching just like that is disturbing and I oh like my that, god and I like that they gave, she gave her the choice of like I knowing you are alive like my family is alive is enough mm-hmm. and i like and then she lets her choose and then she and i like how when she's like gonna ask her the like what do i choose and she's already gone yeah it's like it's just so good it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very happy it's a very good very it really stuck to the ending very well i also like how they handle rasputin in kind of a it, it's a funny but also a gross way Oh, like, like all like body parts falling. And- yeah like part- the thing that i'm thinking about is his head falling into his rib cage yeah. like that's Funny, but also disgusting. You got to pull yourself together, master. I love Bart. Bart. God, Hank Azaria. And he has his own, his own spinoff movie. I've not Are seen it. Are you serious? I, There's that's, a whole... Yeah, Bart Talk the Magnificent. Oh, Bart Talk the Magnificent. That's what that is. Okay. Yep. That's the only Don Bluth sequel there is. That's really but, funny. Yep. And I've actually heard good things about it. Hmm. I hear it's actually pretty good, but I've I mean, never seen it. If he made it himself, it maybe yeah. All right. Well, on that note, guys, have anything else before we move on to our last pick? Nope. All no. right. Last pick. It's, That's uh, me. Jake's. Yep, yep, yep. It's a good one. Yep, so, yep, yep. So I have, I have a great story about my pick, and I'm going to tell the story before I reveal the pick, and the reveal is going to be at the end of the story. All right. So my fondest memory with this movie is a Pizza Hut promotion. Ooh, yes. So... A long, long time ago, in a world far, far away. <laughs> prehistoric times. In prehistoric times. The pe- age the, of the dinosaurs. The 20th century. Pizza Hut would run promotions on several movies for kids. And it, it, it was like a personal pan pizza, something else. It was, it was like a kid's meal, basically. They did it for Beauty and the Beast. They had several Beauty and the Beast things. But this movie, they had... Uh, cast plastic puppets or cast rubber pl- puppets. Okay. They had one of every character. And my dad decided that he loved these things. <laughs> so every week when he heard that they had a new one going, we'd go to Pizza Hut. <laughs> Old school Pizza Hut slap, by the way. Just saying. And he had, we have in his, in our basement right now, I think probably two of each of these things. One for me to play with. <laughs> and another for him to keep in the plastic. <laughs> I'm, of course, talking about The Land Before Time. Yeah. My second favorite animated movie of all time. Um, second only to The Lion King. And to be honest with you, thinking about the both of them, they, they could switch places from here or there. These are horrifying. Depending on what. what? Let me see. Or you, oh, are you looking at the, old, like, the little. Like, Is that the them? Battles? That's them. The, the one that always confused me was Petrie because he's blue. Oh my and his god! Eyes are, like his eyes are big, but when he's that big and his eyes are that big, why is he bigger than Ducky? Aren't they like the same size? Yeah, they are like about the same size. No, Petrie is much smaller than Ducky. Is he? He has like, the wingspan. But the, you but, know. The, but the the sharp tooth looks so happy. It's probably because he's gonna eat soon. No, no, no. <laughs> it's because you stick his hand, your hand up his butt to use him. 
Oh, that's oh no. <laughs> These are oh, kind of no. horrifying. No, seriously, the hole why is did, right at the bottom. Why, why did your dad? I don't know. What, I, I don't know. I don't know if it was because me and my sister loved the land before time. I, I don't mean, know. So you, Who? so you were, you were two in this movie. How old was your sister? When we get six, eight. If I was two, she was seven. Seven. Gotcha. This That's is just so prime fun. watching for those years. Like, can you remember that? Yeah, you're two years old. And like, wow. I don't know if it was when I was two because it could have been. It depends on when they started it. It could have been when I was like three, but I I remember doing that. Yeah, that is very impressive. I don't remember anything before like the age of twenty. Dicky, <laughs> I'm surprised you remember anything past waking up this morning. <laughs> I really don't remember much, honestly. I mean, come on, isn't isn't it a little bit like fifty first dates for Sam every time you wake up? <laughs> How much pot did you smoke <laughs> last night? No, we're not talking about the night before, Dicky. <laughs> I got it before twenty. It's that party he threw at his parents' house that they still don't know about, where no, that's, everyone that's saw one. his just, yeah and his brain cell just went. Sh- only anyway, only anyway, brain cell. Anyway, I anyway. love this movie. It, it's, the animation it's is wonderful. It's it's it, like it's cry. scared me as a child because Sharp Tooth scared me. Oh yeah. But the thing that I have always been particularly fascinated about with this movie, and this is gonna be so this is gonna sound so dumb. I'm ready I'm for I'm so it. curious. The sound design. The noises that it makes. What's dumb about that? It what, but it like it, it to the level that it fascinates me is what's dumb. Also, I didn't say it was dumb. I said it sounded dumb that that would be the thing that would fascinate me about the movie. That's like the way they do the cries, the way they do the the feet running on the ground, the rocks sliding every time Sarah hits sharp tooth and it's like <laughs> oh, like those like it just something in my so it, it it makes something in my mind go ah. You know what else does it for me? You mentioned the sound design. I think just the music and I, I really, yes. yeah, I really think that's, and who did the music for this? James again? Horner, I think. James rest Horner. In, rest in peace. So, I, 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 he, I obviously have to credit a bond, like pretty much all, James Horner gives the credit, but I feel like Spielberg just had that touch where he knows how to make like. Dinosaur movies. He, yeah, he just knows how to make Yeah, it was him movies. and George Lucas and Kathleen Kennedy were executive producers, weren't they? Yeah. Like, like it's just it was what? not the Kathleen Kennedy everyone oh, yeah. hates for Kathleen some reason. Kennedy, what? It's not like she can do a producer. good thing. No, Star Wars idiots. Yeah, but like this, like this makes me cry every. It makes everyone cry. Time. So watching it this time, this, there's something that I never caught before. What's that? that giant chunk got a little foot's mom's back. Yeah, I know. There is that a last giant time. chunk, and I think the reason I didn't catch it is because it's not bleeding. It's just a chunk out of her yeah that's probably yeah i it, like just <sighs> yeah i noticed that last year when i did my big marathon oh yeah how was that should i tell should i tell them about yeah, it briefly? Go, ahead. go ahead that's a good story last year of torture i bought a dvd box set of every single land before time movie there are 14 of them it was like 10 bucks why not so i decided it was a good idea for two weeks to watch one of them a day <laughs> that was a terrible idea <laughs> I was sick of it by day four. Listeners, I bought the same box set. I will not be doing that. Uh, I have not bought the same box set, but I will stand by the first six or seven are fantastic. No. It's like, (laughs) yes. No. That is the OG in here. Let me, where's my phone? Um, I I, want to bring out a list because I got, I like legitimately, I think I've watched all of the first six or seven, like at least like, 15 times each like this was absolutely my go-to like every single movie so just just say let me let me bring this up here oh and just for the record you know what i just bought on ebay what yes one of the puppets no no oh, god i have all of them why would i need to no your dad has all of them my dad has two of all of them therefore i have all of them okay okay here we go before time seen it what? times. how does that work they're his uh, are they at your homie, house? They're they're my, just because they're not at my house does not mean they're not mine. I know Why they were my you? toys. The ones that are in plastic are his. Why don't you go get them? Because I don't want to. You don't want them. No. 
You could have brought him on here and said, hey, look. <laughs> anyway, I, that is exactly what I would have done. Okay. Yeah. I have the list and I want to mention the secret of source rock. Number six is probably my second favorite. I love yeah, that was one of the worst ones. Oh, my God. It was boring. Yeah, Most of them are so boring. I totally oh, just I watched. Just, oh, you I guys. watched the first four and I was done by four. Nah, man. Because I was like. I watched it like. I looked at the list and. No, so, no, I take it back five because. Mysterious uh, Isle? Mysterious Island. 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 That was a good one. Because. Friends I, for dinner. Yeah. I, I, watched, I watched it because Chomper came back and I love Chomper. Yes. Did you. So you didn't make it because I, I remember. I actually remember big, up to big, big water. I do have a question, though. I do have a question. Yes, go ahead. In the land before time, in all of this advertising material, Littlefoot is brown. Why in the movie is he purple? He's not purple. He is. He kind of is, yeah. I mean, not what I'm looking I mean, they're at. all kind of different colors based on what light they're in, but... That's another thing. Watching these three movies, Don oh. Booth is really good at lighting. Yeah, you're really, really, really good. You know what else he's really, really good at? Right. Animating. Facial expressions. There's so much character. There's a couple poses he does with characters in all his movies, or one of them's like this, like when they're they all like sh- that, they when they're kind of like kinda with shucks, or kind of like the... Or when they're like sad and pouting, they're kind of like turn their head aside. And go. You know, you're so, totally right because really, really quick, the like the part that gives me all the, like the, a, a lot of feelings is when like you see Littlefoot like like rubbing like like snuggling up like uh, oh on the his mom. the the footprint uh, yeah <laughs> and like and just like like the faces he like he makes like just I I don't know how but that sequence like, or the just, face Sharp Tooth makes when the rock falls on him. <laughs> like it, it just it just it, it it imprinted in like the back of my brain like it's one of those things from my childhood that i can or never the face his eyeball get. makes when he wakes up when sarah's running at him That's another, it's like, like the eye of sauron is like 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 i like it literally looked like that like it just it like it has that power like I'm, you're you're yeah he's a good he's good at making movies man yeah the the face uh ruder makes when Littlefoot tells, kind of tells him what happened, and he goes from being annoyed to being empathetic. That's what makes me cry. That's the part oh, that would that make me cry. Is that change? Just because oh. he's saying it's, a, he's like, well, it's all her fault. And he's like, whose fault? And Jesus, oh, I want. And then he kind of has this like, goes from, kind of softens up. He goes, oh, I see. Which he's also the narrator, if you didn't know. Yep. Ah, didn't know that. Wait, but is that Pat Hingle? Also, I think he's the same type of dinosaur that Spike is. This, well, I saw, like, yeah, I, when I was watching this, I was like, is Spike, are we gonna, this is when we see Spike. I was, I was very confused because I thought that was, that was Spike? very confused. Spike, so Spike, Spike literally is born. And the first thing he does know, is eat and go yeah. back to sleep. This is my spirit <laughs> I was animal. saying retweet, <laughs> honestly, retweet, like. But like the sound that is chomping, dude. Makes. His chomping is so satisfying. Oh my god, I could listen to that. I'm telling you, the sound design just, of that movie is just like a, a, a and yeah. Okay, so Pat Hingle's the voice of Rooter. He was Commissioner Gordon in the Burton Batman movie. Why well, am the two Schumacher one? I thought I recognized his voice. That make okay. That, yeah, I've never heard that before too. Don Bluth. Nicely done, sir. Nicely done. Anything else about Don Bluth movies that we haven't touched on yet? I love the way he uses water. And animates water in this, in the Land Before Time, and the way that the dirt functions like water. The yeah, the, just in the footprints, like like it, it's just the footprints. The footprints every time they kind of slide somewhere, every time they kind of slop into something. I'm I'm really glad you mentioned like the lighting and stuff like that, like before, like it just I, I never really <laughs> there, thought about it. But there like, were a couple parts where it's like, okay, that's a little weird. Like, so there's one scene where Dick Ducky, wow, wow, not me, <laughs> not me. Uh, <laughs> nope, nope, <we're> nope. <laughs> nope, 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 nope. Ducky, not Dicky. Go on. Uh, where Ducky turns yellow for like a full like three minutes, <laughs> <laughs> and then another part. When I think when she swims down or is in like a cave trying to. Yeah. When she's in the cave with things that headbutt. Oh, yeah. 
She's just white. <laughs> yeah. I I love the movie. It has its faults. I'll, I'll give it that. It's just, but I. It's so creative. My nostalgia is willing to make up for those faults or it's, overlook those faults. It, and the song at the end makes me emotional. Because it's that main theme. Do, 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 that whole thing. Also, if we hold on together. I words. also didn't realize it was so short. Yeah. It's only an hour and eight minutes. Barely a feature length. I think from what I thought I read, is it there there George? were there were more scary scenes in it. They had to cut. That makes sense. That's I, why it's so short. There's like ten minutes they cut. Yeah. Oh. Like a little more uh, gory. From what I hear. Such a too scary. How much I, given I mean, that when I was a kid, I was terrified by Fern Gully. I'm probably pretty <laughs> glad that they did that. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, thank you for listening to today's episode on. Don Bluth movies. If you want to stay up to date with what we got going on, Jerry, where can the good people find us online? They can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. And they can also what are you laughing at? Uh-huh. The TikTok? The TikTok. Gotcha. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Is that funny? Yeah. Good. I need a laugh. <laughs> <laughs> you can uh, then listen to us on Apple, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and hey, if it's YouTube, you can uh, like, subscribe, ring our bell. And also, I'll just say this. Uh, you should read Don Bluth's autobiography again somewhere out there, My Animated Life, because I haven't. <laughs> I've I read one chapter. Read Dune, I will so. read the whole thing. I just uh, hadn't read, read it yet. So I honestly might want to check that out, too. That sounds kind of interesting. But anyway, thank you. So, uh, again, thank you for listening. Make sure to rate us on all that good stuff. We will see you next time with more awesome content very soon. So from all of us here at Off Slate Media, thank you for listening. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.